Ethiopia's President Mengistu resigned today under pressure from the advancing anti-government rebels. State radio said the Marxist leader had fled the country after more than 14 years in power. His departure came less than a week before peace talks between the Ethiopian government and rebel leaders were to begin. We have a report from Edward Sturton of Independent Television News. During his 15 years in power, the suffering of Ethiopians has been extreme even by the standards of their country's violent history. And the view among Western diplomats this morning is that President Mengistu's departure greatly improves the prospects for an end to Ethiopia's civil war. Talks between the government and the rebel forces are due to begin in London this week. He came to power in the wake of the overthrow of Haile Selassie, Ethiopia's last emperor. Colonel Mengistu vowed to replace imperial power with Marxist doctrine, but was often accused of governing with autocratic high-handedness and living in imperial splendor reminiscent of Haile Selassie's court. His rule was challenged by guerrillas from the northern provinces of Tigray and Eritrea. These wars of independence had begun long before he took power and continued throughout his time in office. Eritrea is now said to be largely under rebel control and some rebel troops are reported to be 50 miles from the capital. The supplies of Soviet arms he once had to fight them have now dried up. The war greatly increased the impact of the natural disasters the people of Ethiopia have suffered. The task of delivering aid to those afflicted by famine complicated by the fighting. An end to President Mengistu's rule may make it possible to build a peace so that his country's humanitarian problems can be more effectively dealt with.